detective quantum efficiency. So this is a method to assess how efficient a system is converting x-rays coming in into the actual image signal itself. This is Albert Rose here. In addition to proposing the first demonstration of the relationship between contrast, the size of the object, and how easy those things are to perceive in a medical image. He also proposed detective quantum efficiency. He didn't give it the name at the time, but he proposed the idea of this concept to have a method to study the efficiency of the system for converting x-rays into our medical image. This is called linear systems theory to think about our system and how it converts signals into the images. We can think of those signals as being made up of many different frequencies. So this is what we call the Fourier transform. Linear systems theory is based on the fact that we can think of our signal as being made up either of an image itself or being made up of a combination of sinusoids. Those two things are actually equivalent. We can take our image and we can do a Fourier transform and that is a representation of our image as being made up of many different sinusoids. And then the question is, with those different sinusoids, how are they treated differently as they pass through our imaging system? We have sinusoids that have relatively lower frequency. That means they oscillate less frequently in the spatial domain. And then down here you can see sinusoids that oscillate much more frequently in the spatial domain. Large features in your medical image, those are the lower frequency features. And then small features like a crack in the skull or the edge of something, that's high spatial frequency content. The modulation transfer function we've talked about before and we showed the kind of bar representation of an oscillating signal going from bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. That's the same kind of thing you can think about as this oscillating signal it goes to high, low, high, low, high, low. This is just like a 1D signal. If you think about drawing a line through here, you get something like that. And we talked about that before when we talked about the MTF, but we want to just refresh that because it's also relevant to the detective quantum efficiency. So if we take our signal and we pass it through our system, and then we look at if our signal originally had a given amplitude, so that's how bright this white is and how dark this black is, that's the amplitude here. If we look at a lower frequency signal, say this lower frequency signal had an amplitude A, and then after it goes through our system, it has an amplitude of 0.9A. So then we can make one point on our MTF graph, so at 0.9 MTF for spatial frequency F. And then if for something that's a higher frequency that oscillates twice as often, the question is, if we pass it through our imaging system, then what's the amplitude when it comes out? So for instance, in this case, it's 0.75. So then we get another point on our MTF curve. So 0.75 is the value for 2F. So a spatial frequency of 2F. And then if we have one that's 4F and we pass it through our system, then that amplitude is 0.5. That gives us another point on our MTF curve. And then finally, we have one here that's 8F. And for instance, say that case has 0.1 times the original amplitude A. So that would give us another point here on our MTF curve. And then you can Think about a line that goes through here or some sort of curve. In reality, we measure these things actually differently. We don't measure them by just taking one signal and passing it through. We use the Fourier transform of something, such as the Fourier transform of a point or the Fourier transform of a line. We use those types of things in order to actually measure this MTF. But the concept that we want to talk about is MTF is something that measures the reduction of the signal amplitude for higher spatial frequencies. Next question is noise. How does it perform with respect to noise? So 
if you have an image of noise, such as you see here, you can think about separating that noise into the different spatial frequencies as well. So there's lower frequency noise as well as higher frequency noise. And then the question is, for the noise power spectrum, we think about taking our lower frequency noisy signal and putting it through the imaging system. So if we do that here, what we measure actually is, again, on the output we're measuring a lower frequency signal and then another noisy lower frequency signal. And what we're looking at here is actually the ratio of the variation. So it's not the pure amplitude itself, but it's the variations in the amplitude. And if we do that, again, each different frequency, that's the essential idea of what we want to do in a noise power spectrum. So just like we can make a plot for the MTF, as far as the amplitude coming out, here we're making a plot of the noise variations coming out. This looks at how the system will treat the different noise as a function of spatial frequency. In reality, what we do is we'll take noisy images that are taken on the medical imaging systems, and we'll use the Fourier transform again. The Fourier transforms at different overlapping regions in order to actually calculate this. But again, what we want to take away here is the high level. What we're doing is we're looking at variations as a function of spatial frequency. For the detective quantum efficiency, we first want to talk about what's the purpose of having the detective of quantum efficiency. If you go to auto dealers and you say, I have one gallon of gasoline, the different auto dealers can tell you, if you've given one gallon of gasoline, how far those cars can run. The same kind of idea we want to do here, given some initial set of ideal photons, that they do have quantum noise, but they're ideal otherwise. There are x-rays that have gone through the patient, but they haven't gone through the detector yet. The signal to noise ratio coming in, again, all these things we can talk about, they are a function of the spatial frequency in the object. And obviously if it's in two dimensions, we would have spatial frequencies in two dimensions. But a lot of times we'll combine those spatial frequencies to make a plot in one dimension like I've shown here. So we have the signal-to-noise ratio coming in. And we have another video where we talk about what the definition of signal-to-noise ratio is. But we can think about the signal-to-noise ratio coming in right before it hits the detector. Then we have an imaging system. That imaging system will have blur. It will have additive noise. And then output we have the actual system image so that contains the initial quantum noise it also contains the noise from the detector any processes that are used to convert between those x-ray photons and the measured signal on the detector and then what we get there is the signal to noise out again as a function of spatial frequency so the detective quantum efficiency is just the ratio of the signal to noise out divided by the signal to noise in it's how efficient your system, your detector, converts those X-ray photons to the measured signal. And again, this is a function of spatial frequency. So we can make curves like this to see how efficient it is. And in general, the goal would be to have a profile like this. If your detector was perfect, if it was infinitely small and perfect at getting all the signal, then you would have a DQE of one for all spatial frequencies, but those systems do not exist in reality. So in reality, we do want to have comparisons of DQEs between systems so we can look at how efficient the system is at capturing the inherent information. That DQE can be expressed as a ratio of the MTF squared divided by the noise power spectrum. So that's why we talked about those two quantities. If the system does less blurring as a function of the different spatial frequencies, then the DQE will give it a thumbs up. There's some other quantities as well, system gain that are involved, but just so that we know that MTF and noise power spectrum are related to the DQE as well. And then finally, we'll show one sample case, which is a case of comparing a few 
detector technologies for x-ray imaging. So if we look at the standard screen film case, that's these triangles here. Those standard screen film cases, they're represented right here. So they have a given DQE, and that DQE is decreasing significantly as a function of spatial frequency. And that we want to compare that against other technologies to convert our x-ray into the signal. One of them is computed radiography. So that's here. That's shown in these boxes here. So that's the process of having a system that instead of doing the development every time, the signal is stored and then it goes and it's plugged in and it's read out with a laser and then reads out the signal that's stored. And again, that, that was comparable here to the um, screen film for these frequencies. And then for the more recent detector technologies that have, for instance, cesium iodide, you can see that's this case here. So in that case, the x-ray photons are converted to light photons, and that's using this columnar structure. So there's less spreading of the light. So the MTF will be higher in general, leading to a higher DQE at these higher spatial frequencies. And then the one that does the best at the highest spatial frequencies is this amorphous selenium detector. When the x-rays come in, rather than converting those x-rays to light, which is then measured by converting into electrons, in this case, the x-rays are converted to electrons directly and then read out directly. So there's less blurring of those x-rays. So again, this one does best at these highest spatial frequencies. But this is, in general, a sample case of why we would want to use detective quantum efficiency in practice.